What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another deck profile here on TCG University for the Card Game Universes. My name's Tam, and today I'm going to be showing you Jeff's Joffrey deck that he played for the Universes Campus Championship champs versus the world if you like this deck profile make sure you go and check out all of the matches that we played for this uh, campus championship as well as all of the uh, the other profiles that we did for the campus championship they'll be in their playlists here on the channel with that said let's go ahead and jump into the profile all right so we've got jeffrey Oanda, joffrey as some people call him i'm gonna call him jeff because uh my, my good buddy jeff made the deck so um if you haven't seen one of my deck, my deck profiles basically what i'm gonna be doing is as opposed to just uh reading off what the card does verbatim i'm gonna give you more of a feel of how the deck wants to work right and so what does jeff want to to do so once per turn jeff flashes an attack and so he doesn't have to deal with an, an entire enhanced step and if he doesn't have any cards in his hand he reduces the damage to zero so he doesn't have to deal with the attack at all this is really really solid because of the fact that it says that one of my opponent's attacks just isn't going to do the cool thing that they want the reason we play this game is because enhancers are so interactive with each other and so whenever i uh, i don't get to play um enhances because of the flash mechanic working how it is um i feel like i'm very much in control as well as um he also says uh as a first form i get I get to commit one of my opponent's cards. I get to pick and commit whatever cool thing, and that is equal to the number of characters inside of my staging area. And so the first thing I'm going to talk about is the fact that we are indeed stacking Jeffrey 2 dot. Um, we're going to take the other one and toss it down here uh, as well. And we can't talk about one dot without talking about two dot. And so what does two dot do? Two dot says, response after any character, so any of these five characters, enters our staging area. My opponent freezes one of their, or I freeze one of their my opponent's foundations. And so what that means is um, during the next ready phase normally all of my foundations that were committed ready back up well if a foundation is frozen during the next um turn during the next player's ready phase mine or yours um it does not ready so this is a little um unoptimal whenever uh, i am freezing things on my opponent's turn because the next ready phase will be my turn well there's a there, we can get into that later but the important part is is i am trying to commit my opponent's staging area and keep it committed for as long as possible and an, a good way to do that is once per turn on my turn my opponent commits one foundation for each character in my staging area so if i have it fully stacked up with how the deck is played right now i can have my opponent just commit six foundations for for, for no reason this deck was stacking and gauging out characters like it was nobody's business, and he was easily stacking up three, if not four characters, and just on every single one of my attacks, hey, commit four as well as the first form, commit one, and anytime I added a character in, I'm going to take and lock one of those down. Very, very strong stuff. Um, I'm really, really happy with how this, uh, this deck performed. You guys should definitely go out and check out the matches. We're going to leave all of that there. Okay, so moving on to the attacks. Um, talking about the uh, aggressive foundation, uh, the aggressive attacks first, excuse me. Um, we're playing four Nutcracker. This card just says uh, extra draw power. This card says extra damage. This card is just really good uh, all around. One of the best cards in the game. One of the most expensive cards in the game. Just because of how much that it can accomplish. The giving, the saying my, my Nutcracker gets an extra four damage. I've commit, made you commit one. I'll make you commit a bunch more with the, uh, the, the Jeffrey and then smack you with it. It's really, really good. Up next, we're playing four Golden Arrow. This is the only gauge attack that we are playing inside of the deck. Asterix, we do have some other ways to uh, make that pop off. But uh, this card says that I will uh, take and flip any card in my staging area and give speed equal to the, uh, the control of the card. What's really cool about uh, this cool combo is I can play Nutcracker. It will add in whatever foundation I play. I then play a Golden Arrow. I'll flip the foundation because I wasn't allowed to build it anyways. And now my attack got plus uh, five speed because of the control of the foundation. Um, just There's some really, really neat, cheeky things that we can do with, uh, with Golden Arrow. It's, it's really, it's a very, very cool card. One of the most underrated gauge cards in the, in the game, I think. Up next, we're playing four Glow Kick. This card is a, a, a an aggro card only because of the fact of how fast it gets. This card um, I saw at one point with all of the stun that we had and the Glow Kick. Um, my opponent had to block on like a 13 or 14 just because of how freaking quick this guy is. Um, it is it is almost guaranteed plus five damage. As well as if you happen to reveal a non-attack card, you can just kick uh, kick it up to your hand and then and then play it back out. Oh, I'll reveal a Nutcracker off my glow kick. Oh, okay. So you are going to hit me again. Neat. On to the consistency cards. We're playing four Akimbo. 
this card just says uh, on the turn that I'm not trying to really go in. I will build a couple foundations. I'll play the akimbo. I'll draw a few extra cards. I've built the foundations. I tried to hit you with a poke. I'll commit a bunch of your cards so that possibly the the little baby three damage akimbo will go through. Probably a five and eight damage akimbo, um, and then uh, and then have cards to defend myself. Not to mention Joffrey's flash. This card is just just hey, I want to be proactive in this turn, and I want to get as much advantage as I can. Akimbo is one of the best advantage uh, engines inside of the game. And then my last card, I want to call this card a uh, a uh, a flow card, a tempo card. But I just it f it feels like it's really good in every spot that it can be in. I think this is one of the strongest cards in the in the game. Whenever you take and you play the deck as we're playing currently under the Earth symbol, it just says enhance add all foundations for my card pool to my staging area. We have cards inside of our deck that want to add themselves up to the card pool for an effect, um, and some of them are playable while committed. And so whenever you add them all back down to your staging area, you will. Uh, get all those cards ready. And so one of the coolest things you can do is if you know you have to have a, a foundation that you have in your hand or a committed playable while committed add to your card pool foundation, you will just add all of these cards up or build them beforehand, play with power flip, and then build them back down. I saw Jeff at one point um, play uh, a couple nutcrackers, add in the cool card that he wanted on the turn, play the power flip, and then and then bring all these cards down. And so this is just giving you a lot of really bursty uh, abilities, um, not to mention the fact that it has stun one and it has a reversal. So I can block, play my reversal, and then continue through. This uh, could be considered an aggro card because of how some of our foundations work. This could be considered a disruption card, once again, because of how some of our foundations work. It really is one of the most well versified, versatile cards inside of this deck, which is why I can't really put it inside of any, uh, any category, and, and you'll see why. I'm actually going to leave it off to the side over here. All right, under the assets, um, I think Omega Sword and Owl Shield is one of the most defensive, best defensive cards in the entire game. Um, this card says, while it's ready in your staging area, um, my blocks ignore progressive difficulty, which means I can um, have 100 cards inside of my card pool and block with a zero mid block, and it is a zero plus your speed. Uh, insane. And not to mention the fact that it says check a four, you get a damage bonus. Very good for our um, gauge attack, which has a three block modifier and a four damage. Um, and so if they uh, partial block it, I'm still going to be doing four damage and then gauging four back out. Sorry about that loud noise. <laughs> Onto the Omega Sword and Elk Shield. This is very much a uh, defensive foundation. I can block with it as if it were in my hand from my staging area. And if I do block, it only does one damage. And so one of the cool plays that I can do is I can flash with Joffrey, um, make sure they don't have any enhances to increase the speed, and then just oh, I'll block and I'll, I'll take one. My 26 vitality is going to stay right where it's at. And then my last uh, asset is Surpass Your Limits. I think this card is fine. I think it does a lot of really neat stuff, but consistency is not its uh, forte. The big thing about this card is it says, uh, look at the top card of my deck. I can discard it, and so this is just a consistency card. It's just flow, as well as flip a foundation for plus one damage or minus uh, two damage. Um, a little offense, a little defense. It's, uh, it's just an all-around okay card. The response to destroy is fairly good, especially whenever we talk about the next card, and that is triple Stop. Stop says after I block with it, I get to commit my character. So in the same vein as the uh, Omega Sword and Elk Shield, I will flash the card that I want to block without them increasing speed, block with the stop, commit their character, and then proceed on with my turn. Onto the foundations. So if you haven't seen one of my deck profiles, basically the way that I've been doing this is we take and we go through and we talk about the jobs of the foundations as opposed to just reading them off. And so the first section that I want to talk about is the aggressive foundations. We're playing three one with nature. This card just says I'm gonna on on my kill turn on a on a card that I need to make sure I can get some momentum for. I will discard a foundation or a bad card, a card that I'm not planning on using for this turn, and my block modifier gets plus one, as well as after it's a card is discarded, my, my attack gets plus one damage. And they can stack with each other. So I can discard one. One card with one with nature and then respond with both one with ones with nature because it just says after it's been discarded. Up next, we're playing four Fusion Refusal. Uh, this card is that card that I was talking about whenever we uh, talk about Power Flip that says, playable while committed, added up to my card pool, my Power Flip will get plus two damage. And so I've got four of these committed in my staging area. I've got a Power Flip in my card pool. I'll add f all four up and give it plus eight damage, and then I'll add them all back down. And now they're all ready. They were committed. I just re-rated four foundations and gave my attack uh, uh, eight damage. Insane. Absolutely crazy. And this uh, combos perfectly well with, honestly, the aggressive part of Bastion Stance. Bastion Stance says, enhance your attack. Add this card up to your card pool. Your opponent adds one of their committed foundations to their card pool. And so what this card says is while it is ready inside of my staging area and I have a power flip, I'm going to be pushing cards up into my opponent's staging area. And this says that my opponent is going to, excuse me, my opponent is going to uh, have 
uh, card stuffed in their card pool, and so their block uh, progressive is way harder. Um, that that cool thing that we wanted for the uh, Omega Sword and Owl Shield, um, this card just says that um, the reason this card's good is the reason that this card's good is because having block progressive is incredibly, incredibly annoying. And if if you have forgotten, we can use this as disruption because Power Flip is a reversal. And so if I have these down on my staging area and they're ready, I will I will block with whatever, play the Power Flip. I will push all three of these up if they've committed three foundations. They're now going to stuff their card pool full with three cards. And then with Power Flip, I will build them all back down if i need to i'll stuff them back up again i won't get to build these back down but putting six cards in my opponent's card pool essentially says that their turn is over um this small engine here of fusion refusal power flip bastion stance couldn't be played in any single earth deck that you want it to um this this is a very very strong engine and so make sure you uh give this uh give this engine a try it's it is actually a blast to play Onto the flow, we're talking about for a moment's worth of rest. As I said in the the previous part of the the video, we do have other ways to give our characters gauge. This card says enhance flip. This attack gains gauge equal to its printed damage. But that is not the best part of the card. This does say um, seventh cross. If you look at the symbol down at the bottom, you can't see that, but I'm sure you'll see it on the side of the screen. Um, after you block, after you play a character at that character staging area, that does include block. And so the reason Joffrey was not very good before this uh, this card came out, but you can take and you can block with your Joffrey two dots, respond with a moment of rest, flip it, add it into your staging area, and now freeze one of their cards. Not amazing on the block, but just good enough to uh, to warrant it being in here. Or I'll take and I'll play my cool card that has uh, that has gauge four. I will flip a five difficulty, uh, five control card in my card pool, um, giving it uh, plus five speed. Gauge four, give it another gauge four. I hit you twice. Now when I add in both Joffreys, those two those two cards are frozen for the uh, for the foreseeable turn. Up next, we're playing three Folktale Storytellers. This is just, uh, honestly, to continue to push through Breaker. This is for a little extra uh, build on an attack turn. It doesn't feel amazing whenever I uh, I have this card in a bunch of akimbos because I want to utilize the ability to bring it in, but this is just a bit of a safety net on a turn that I want to be aggressive. We're playing Double Solemn Exorcism. This is really, really good because Joffrey wants to respond whenever he doesn't have any cards in his hand. And if I don't have any cards in my hand, I cannot block. And so I'll go down to no cards in my hand. I will respond on Joffrey to give their cool thing flash, and then they play another attack, an attack that might kill me. Well, if I don't have any cards in my hand, I can commit it and then draw one card. It's a, it's a little bit of a desperate play, but it is good enough. As well as, after I block a weapon attack, this card gains Breaker 2. A fifth of the attacks in the game currently are Breaker 2. And so uh, this card just says... A fifth of the attacks in the game are just significantly worse than they, they should be. We're playing three Sense of Morals. The reason I'm calling this a uh, flow card is, number one, it doesn't count as progressive. And so whenever I play my Nutcrackers, this is a very safe card to be included into the card pool. As well as, whenever I take and I get committed, my opponent stuns me trying to... Um, make sure that my foundations are locked down or they commit uh, specific cards, I can ready them all back up. On to the defense, we're playing one Patriot Stance. The reason this is a defense card is, honestly, it is in here for exactly two reasons. Number one, if my opponent, if I push through a very cool uh, uh, power flip play, um, I take and I block reversal, I power flip, I, I do all my cool stuff, I can take and uh, enhance, flip my, power, uh, my Patriot Stance on my opponent's next attack, and then add the power flip back to my hand. If they are foolish enough to continue, I can block and then pay the pay the power flip again and then do all that shenanigans one more time as well as i can do that same exact play with nutcracker i can take it i can block with the nutcracker and then respond breaker two if they're foolish enough to play another card i will flip the patriot stance pick my nutcracker back up and then play it back again and then another breaker two they're gonna have to work through breaker for this turn i've turned one card by flipping a foundation i have just gained an additional breaker two block into my hand we're playing double bakery poster girl on defense it just says enhance destroy the speed is zero even playable while committed so fantastic to uh first commits and then get rid of them uh make a, a thing flash i'll i'll block it oh you've played a couple abilities on the next one well i'll destroy this and then block the next one with a breaker too like do you see the see the combo here do you see the easy combo <laughs> Block your first thing, first thing, break or two, flash the next one, flip, pick up the Nutcracker, um, Bakery Poster Girl. Like, there's, there's just a lot of really good stuff. A lot of really good combos. 
Up next, we're playing three Guardian of the Spirit Sword. Really fantastic uh, card inside of here. It says minus two, possibly minus three speed on a fifth of the attacks, as well as flip, discard a card, add a really solid block to your hand. The Omega Sword and Owl, uh, Elk Shield is just beautiful, beautiful block. Playing double, know your objective, uh, just commit minus two speed. Um, a little worse than the Guardian of the Spirit Sword, but speed. Uh, the way that people uh, die inside of universes is that they can't block things. And so make sure that you can control my opponent's speed stat is incredibly, incredibly important. On the disruption, we are playing uh, double the dark side of karma. This card says that after my opponent plays an ability on uh, four-fifths of the attack... Uh, four-fifths of the cards, the attack cards inside of the game, I can cancel it. Or, um, if it is on a non-character card, I can just remove it and cancel it. It does have a little bit of, of speed... Um, uh, modulation that was what i was looking for but it is not the most important part of the card it is just honestly after my opponent plays an ability i'm gonna i'm gonna get rid of it really really fun to add this in with nutcracker and then build it down with power flip just it's a really good feeling and then my last card is double pursuing a vendetta uh, i don't want my opponent to get rid of my staging area i'm playing these cool foundations and i want to i want to play with them as a reason I'm, i put them in the deck and so pursuing a vendetta says that after um any other of my foundations leave my card pool leave my staging area excuse me during my opponent's effect um i will flip it and add whatever card i want to into the staging area uh so i don't know like a dark side of karma or something seems pretty all right all right so thank you very much for watching the jeffrey deck profile if you like this one like i said at the top make sure you check out all the other deck profiles that we did for this campus championship as well as the matches that jeffrey played he did support surprisingly well if you want to watch the matches live please go out to twitch.tv slash tcg university at six o'clock on tuesdays we would love to hang out and interact with you as we're playing our fun fun games and then if you can support us please go to patreon.com slash tcg university sub at the one dollar level and get access to the discord where if you've got a cool jeffrey deck that you want to talk about me and the other piece of uh, other people in the community would absolutely love to chat with you so from all of us here at tcgu thank you very much for watching and stay learned